Hello YouTubers, Zero to 100 here and today I would like to share with you my long-term review of the Honda Cross Tourer. Welcome to my channel. It has been now exactly a year since I bought this baby, the Honda Cross Tourer VFR 1200X and I must tell you I am super impressed with this enduro bike. It has been a pleasure riding it I did a lot of research, I wanted to get myself an enduro bike. While doing the research, the only thing that was sort of bugging me was the weight of the bike. So let's get that out of the way right now. It is a heavy bike, it weighs 275 kilos. I think the DCT version, which is the model that I have, so with the automatic gearbox, I think weighs slightly more so it goes up to 282 let's add a few kilos here and there for the uh, uh, additional accessories and you're talking about 285 kilos and to be honest I'm not the tallest of people but I've had no issues with the weight of this bike it handles superbly in the corners while riding it with the power you do not feel it at all it is an incredi incredibly smooth tourer designed to go off-road occasionally and that's exactly why I bought this bike. It handles every condition very very well. It's comfortable, it eats the miles, it's fast off the mark. This thing does 0 to 200 in 12 0.8 seconds 0 to 100 in 3.8 seconds it is a very very fast bike you don't need to worry about gear changes everything happens seamlessly and um, perfect for everyday commuting perfect for long distance touring perfect for a little bit of uh, off-road like this for example so let me run through some of the bike's features. The three top cases came standard with the bike. It's an improved version from the 2012. There was um, talk about the 2012, the first edition. Uh, the cases were leaking because it had a zip system. These are pretty rugged. I've bumped them. Uh, they're hard plastic and no issues, no visible damage. Um, the cases are pretty strong, hold a lot, I can hold two full face helmets, I do a lot of packing, I've been on tour for 14 days and um, it's allowed me to pack everything that I need and there was still room for more. It is shaft drive, so of course always a bonus, no chain maintenance. The uh, touring screen is excellent. For wind protection there is a little bit of wind that hits you and I'm not the tallest uh, of people like I said but there is a little bit of wind that hits you just above the visor it is okay in the hot summer months because it does allow for uh, air intake to your helmet when doing long tours I add a short reflector to the top which eliminates all wind to the to the rider very happy with that. It comes standard with these LED flickers both front and rear. No alloy wheels. It comes standard with these spoked wheels both front and back. The crossbars are, is an optional extra. I chose the Hepco and Becker range. I think it integrates very well with the Honda Cross Tourer. There are talks about the Hepco and Becker crash bars not fitting on the uh, DCT version. I have the DCT version and it is a tight fit but no problem whatsoever. It does come standard with the uh, handguard protectors. I've opted to change the stock to the SW Motex simply because the stock version is just plastic and uh, the SW Motex have got this rugged aluminium frame. 
Um, yeah, the DCT version is pretty good. It comes with um, three options. And let me show you the options quickly. Of course, you have the option to do manual and automatic. If you do manual, you adjust the gear changes through these levers on the left hand side. So there's your plus lever to shift up. Here is your negative lever to shift down. You've got dynamic mode, which is your everyday economic drive mode. So it keeps the revs low, shifts through the gears rapidly. And it's perfect for everyday commuting in town. You don't need to worry about always whacking it in neutral or gearing down and up in traffic. Uh, it handles it's pretty smooth and then you've got the S which is the sportier mode and that of course allows for more performance the revs climb higher um, offering the bike a lot more torque and power I've installed a 12 volt power outlet it does not come standard with a bike the instrumentation is pretty solid, pretty good. It has all the information you need. So it's got the rev counter as a line on top. Yeah. And it's got your engine temperature. It's got the um, ambient temperature. So climate temperature. It's got your fuel gauge. Um, with five bars, each bar roughly around 60 kilometers. The range on this bike is roughly about 300 kilometers with a 21 liter tank. When it comes to the last bar, it does tell you the range and how much fuel you have left in your tank. Of course, standard odometers and time. You've got as well your traction control over here which allows you to set three settings. So full traction control, that means that there is no wheel spin allowed, no wheel lift from the front, and the engine cuts as soon as it senses there's any variation between the front and back wheels. So medium setting, allows for a little bit more aggressive riding and then the last setting the lowest setting I believe you can pick the wheel off the ground so slightly before the engine starts to cut it doesn't die on you but it does cut the power um, stopping you from uh, lifting uh, or wheeling the motorbike you have got the option to switch it off which I have just done now and um, of course those of you that love wheeling this has got enough torque and power to get you off the ground and wheeling if you've got the traction control completely off to switch it back on you just hold it for a few seconds and it goes back on so the instrumentation is pretty good the bike itself is very very comfortable so even with a, a pillion, there is no issues whatsoever with the bike. Very comfortable. I've done, the furthest I've traveled on this bike is 800 kilometers and it was a pleasure. Uh, no backache. The, the uh, position that you ride on this bike is upright. I've taken this off-road. The standing position is also slightly over the handlebars very comfortable very natural position um, and overall from uh, a comfort side with a pillion or without it is 
uh, scores very high on the comfort ratings. Now, uh, the brakes. For such a heavy bike, it has combined ABS. No complaints in that department. The bike stops when you want it to stop. And um, the ABS cannot be switched off. So unfortunately, those of you that like off-roading um, and would like the ABS to be turned off, it cannot be turned off. There is no switch to turn it off uh, whatsoever. You probably will have to pull the fuse or something like that um, to do that. Just to walk around the bike, as you can see there, the dual clutch transmission with the solenoid that kicks in every time uh, it shifts up. And of course, from this side with the exhaust. The rear tire is pretty neat. Of course, I've got the cases covering. You can take them off, no problem. I've opted for this tank protector as a official Honda accessory. I think it looks pretty nice. The rear view mirrors on this bike are really good. You can see everything from the back, everything. I mean, it is really that good. It's got such a good view that you can see exactly what's going on behind you. The last thing that I would like to talk about is, of course, the optional heated grips with five settings by pressing this button. Yeah. And for those of you that don't know, because this bike cannot be manually operated and put into first gear on a slope, you have a handbrake. So that is the handbrake right there. How could I forget? I've got to talk about the engine. The 1200cc engine that's capable of 127 brake horsepower. It is what makes this bike. It is a V4 powerhouse. It's so smooth in its delivery. The engine is the star. It is a beaut. It's what gives this bike its character. Again, I've taken this thing off-road and I'm no off-road professional. I lack experience on uh, the off-road scene but uh, the power delivery I would say is great it does not impact riding on the dirt you stand up on the bike you open throttle and you move this thing handles very very well on the dust roads the tires it's got the Pirelli Scorpion tires are designed for 95 on road and 5% off-road and for my purposes I guess that is all I need those of you that do plan to take this thing more off-road than uh, on-road then of course you will have to get yourself some uh, decent trail tires standard stock it's 95 road and 5 off-road which the Pirelli Scorpion tires are designed for. Anyway, that covers everything. Thank you and bye.